Well, as an independent owner, we have a lot of freedom, a lot of leeway internally on how we invest our resources in the business. We'd grown to a staff at one point of close to 130 people. 2020, we had anticipated breaking into the top 10% in sales volume for the entire company. So a lot of aggressive growth. As we were seeing such incredible growth, our concern became our people. Can their growth keep up with the growth of the business? We quickly began to see that we were going to have to be more proactive in their development. We needed someone to come alongside of us and say, hey, we've got resources, we've got the tools. Last November, we did our first windshake trip. Our values aligned, our vision aligned, what we wanted to do, and it was great. Uh, we made a trip out to Atlanta. We actually got to see the actual windshake facility. Uh, it, was, it was phenomenal to kind of like get around with people who, whose sole purpose and job is to help develop and be there for people was very different. It was like some group activities to help kind of nurture us as a group and to kind of see how we all fit together as a team. It was just a great experience. On the way back, it was just a lot of conversation about how they thought they had benefited. And we knew real quick that this was going to become something we wanted to invest more in. And so we actually started the coaching sessions at the first of the year. Well, I made it very clear to my windshield coach early on that what I wanted to get out of it was to become a better leader here at work. It was very much I wanted to be a better person for my family. What he had done was to not only provide that to me, but to actually make a tie-in where it wasn't just about family, but about work, because they're both relationships that both need nurturing. It, it's made such an impact that they, they crave that interaction. It's an incredible influence on my staff. To have someone like David who is constantly investing in his people, it changes the dynamic of what we do day in and day out. The one thing that is true is, is we are constantly investing in people's personal goals as, as well as their business goals. We ended 2019 very excited about what we thought was coming in 2020. We had a game plan for leadership development. We had a great marketing strategy. 2020 was, it was a blur. It literally went from COVID to Laura to Delta, and it's just like one, one thing after another, but you start asking, where do I make cuts? And, and we never like to cut hours. We don't like to cut anything. I mean, we're built to grow. But when you lose 60 to 80% of your sales, you have to make changes quick. When it becomes a strategic bet, it's easy to say, hey, I need to start cutting spending. I need to, I need to cut labor, I need to cut hours, or I need, I need to cut somewhere. I think a lot of people are tempted to say, hey, the touchy-feely stuff, the leadership development stuff, that, that can go. I, I mean, I went back and forth on it. If our people are our competitive advantage, is that what you let go of? We didn't think that was the right decision. And it's not just the message of you're worth a dollar, it's the message of you have value to my organization. You can, I don't think you can put a dollar mark on that. We were dealing with a staff that was like in the, around the hundreds, and we kind of dropped down to 20 after the hurricane. I didn't have doubts uh, as far as what was going to happen with the restaurant. It's one of those things where I know that we're going to do everything that we can for the team members, for the staff, and every you know for the guests that we serve. We're always asking what's next. And we knew for us what's next is we have to get our people back to stable work. I was driving back and forth every day, getting supplies, getting whatever I could trying to find team members, trying to make sure they're okay. I know originally I was worried, like, do I have to go back to work now? Do I have to jump back into this? Do I have to, like, you know, try to make money, try to make ends meet? Thankfully, Chick-fil-A didn't allow me to have to do that. I was actually able to spend time with my family. To say that the, the, the store, the company, and Mr. David hasn't done more for me than my own family uh, is the biggest understatement. And I don't honestly know where I would be right now had it not been for him. We doubled down on our people. We kept with the coaching. You keep the people out front. Taking care of your people takes care of your business. And I think that will be the difference maker for us. I enjoy developing people. I enjoy seeing them become successful. I heard Truett say one time the best thing he ever did was hire people smarter than him, pay them really well, and let them do their jobs. And it's just that idea of surrounding yourself with good people who are talented, who are intelligent, who are hungry. We started going after those people. And when I started letting go of the business and giving it to them and then proactively developing them, they started having opportunities to prove themselves. And what 2020 did for us was solidify the direction we wanted to go. And that was with leadership development. 
We're not here to hoard talent, we're here to launch leaders. And part of our legacy becomes who are the people that leave our organization and what do they contribute to society. The best way for me to utilize my resources when it comes to my people is developing them for their long-term success.